Every youth can be a success story if they're given the right opportunity and support. Therefore, I think it's important to journey with them through their ups and downs and to always believe in them. Melting Pot recently collaborated with Tribe, which is a social service agency in Singapore, who are advocates for youth facing adversities, presenting a very special Season 9, the Tribe series. The Tribe series is conversations with inspiring young social and youth workers from the agency and episodes are available on all podcast streaming platforms and on YouTube. Do listen, share and support in whatever way you can. It motivates us to bring you a lot more heartwarming stories from across the globe. Support for this series comes from GIG International School, Singapore and the GIG Professional Development Center, part of the prestigious CIA group who promote innovation and experiential study techniques for nurturing independent learners, be it students or be it teachers. Explore their offerings even as they continue to set standards in pedagogy, teacher training and future skills development. Hi, today on Melting Pot, I will be talking to Helga Fu. Helga is a caseworker in rehabilitation and reintegration services, community and youth services division for Tribe, which is in Singapore. Thank you so much for joining me today, Helga. Yes, hi. Okay, Helga, I mean, just before we started recording, I did mention to you that you sounded very young and you said <laughs> that you were in your mid-20s. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to know what encouraged you to actually become a caseworker? Okay, so I guess it started when I was doing my diploma. During that, I was doing um, early childhood studies, so... I came across a lot of stories of like child abuse and that kind of like motivated me to, you know, want to do something about it. And so I started searching up there and then I came across this thing about social services, social work and all. And yeah, that's, that's where I got inspired and decided to pursue this path of working in a social service sector. Okay. Okay. And what kind of formal education do you need to actually you know, become skilled in this particular discipline? Okay, so I guess in Singapore, to be a social worker, you need to at least have degree or a graduate diploma in social work. For a caseworker like me, you need to have a degree um, related to psychology or counselling. So basically for me, I have a degree in social science majoring in psychology and I went on to do graduate, yes, a graduate diploma in social work. So that's some of the qualifications that we need um, to practice um, social work and casework in Singapore. Okay. And when did you join uh, Tribe? I joined early last year, like Jan. 2020 yes last year Jan 2020 2020 okay and joined at a time when you know um we had uh, I, I mean that's when the pandemic actually yes. really started so mm -mm, yes. what are some of the challenges that you have actually faced you know starting your career at mm -mm. this juncture so basically the time when I joined we didn't then go down to we didn't have a lockdown yet so we still can meet clients interact with them face to face the challenge only really start when we went to lockdown and we can't meet the clients physically and a lot of things need to go online and you know for youths to do online video calls and or they get distracted really easily um, it's very difficult for them to pay attention uh, yeah, so that's one difficulty I face. Lah. And also some of the youths, because of financial background, they might not have like the technology need to even do video calls with us. Okay. So okay. we need to navigate around these things. So how did you navigate? So how did you actually handle uh, it so that, you know, your client and you were on the same page? Okay, so for those clients who doesn't have like the technologies, we try to source for like volunteers or like organization that give up secondhand or like pre-loved laptops to donate it to our clients. And so they have like this um, laptop to at least do a Zoom call with us. Okay. So from uh, when a client is assigned to you, Okay, so before that, how many clients are typically assigned to a caseworker? Is it normally just one or is it more than one? 
Usually, it will be more than one. Okay. Um, so for different programs, we have different caseload. So for me, we are given a caseload of 15, maximum 15. Oh, 15 clients. Yeah, so we'll be handling between like 5 to 15 like this usually. Okay. And obviously, each client is unique. So for you, then it's important to, you know, delve very deep into what, you know, what the client will actually and how the client will benefit from, you know, from conversations with you, right? I guess every client is is unique. Um, especially in their own ways. Um, that's why all of our sessions is um, like a one-to-one session. So we try to make it um, relatable to them. Um, so yeah, they will feel accepted, understood and all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that obviously makes sense. So from the time that a client is assigned to you, and to the point where the client gets reintegrated into the community or back with the family or the workforce, typically, how what is the duration? Okay, so, okay, say a client who just got discharged from an institution like the hostel, for them to reintegrate back to the community it takes about like three to six months and then we will after they reintegrate back to the um, community then we'll actually still journey with them like for another one year to make sure they adapt well and then once we see them adapting well we will then look at winning off which and then a termination okay which is a case closure case closure okay and then and then there's no follow-ups after that unless of course you know for some reason the client needs support again yes yeah, so really if they need further support like after we close the case they can still text us come and then we will look at it on a case-by-case basis to ensure they get the support they need okay yeah because otherwise you know all the effort that has gone into getting your client to that point and mm. then if you know if it kind of if the client for some reason slips back then it's all the hard work is just cancelled out so it makes mm. sense to to, yeah. to have a follow-up after you're very young so you know all the clients that since january of last year mm. you've actually journeyed with mm. as a caseworker how do you keep yourself emotionally detached is that a thing <laughs> <laughs> um emotionally detached um okay i'm i'm not sure i guess as a human so we all have emotions yeah i mean when we work with the clients we try to empathize with them we try to feel with them i guess that's where self-care is very important you got to constantly remind yourself that you know you also need to ensure that you are emotionally and mentally stable then you can better support your client i mean yeah so usually also setting boundaries is very important yeah so 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 does that is that something that comes with experience or is it something that you're taught i guess it will come with experience okay as a new worker when i first started yes being emotionally I won't say detached, but setting boundaries was a bit difficult because everything was new to me and um, seeing feeling helpless was a very, was a feeling that I experienced quite a lot during then when I first started. But gradually, I kind of not really got used to it, but maybe know how to set the boundaries and it's gradually got better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what you're saying is that it's, it's experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what, you know, what can you, would you be able to tell me how many, since the time that you started, how many clients have actually reintegrated back into the community, clients that you've been responsible for? Okay. Um, need with? Okay. So basically uh, for me last year, since those cases that I, I'm holding is basically community cases, but like a use that struggles with substance um, use so they are actually in the committee already. But so what we are looking at is recovery. Okay. Um, That's what okay, so you're looking at recovery. 
You're listening to a fusion of stories recounted for the first time ever by some fascinating people from across the globe with me, Payo, on this very unique and special podcast series, Melting Most Pot. Most of them, they have successfully recovered. Definitely there will be one or two that relapse. Okay. So, and so then that's really been your focus mm-hmm. it is youth who are involved with substance. And then would you, so is that something that you specialize in or you could be, you know, given cases of clients who may come from a broken home or, you know, who, who may have other issues or who may be vulnerable because of different reasons is it something that so is it like a segregation or you can be handed over clients who are or you're handed over clients who are only involved in substance abuse okay um so um the program that I was in early last year that was uh, mainly handling the cases it's a program that basically focus on youths that struggles with substance use so basically, all the use that I have been joining with use the user substance. Yeah, and I, I think it's a bit hard to say that it's just you that use substances, but because usually use that you know, struggle with the substances, they they kind of sorry, <laughs> there's a my phone is ringing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they come. Some of them do come from broken families with financial. Um, I mean, with families that have like financial difficulties. Okay. Okay, so um, what does tribe mean to you? Because that is your first job, am I right? First Mm-mm. employment. Okay, so what it means to me, I guess it's like a family to me. <laughs> Everyone there is really um, very friendly and uh, very encouraging. And they really supported me. Um, when, I mean, when I need help, they are really there for me. And I will also say because it's my first job, it's also my learning ground. That's true. I mean, you know, and I think for you to, I mean, Tribe has been in existence since 1995. So, you know, which is quite a long period of time. So for you to actually step in and and have people around you with so much experience, it must be truly a learning ground for you. Yes, it is. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I mean, I mean, you really summarize it really well. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, I can understand that completely. So uh, before I let you go, mm-hmm. what in your, I know you've, you, you know, it's your first job and it's, it's, you're, you're still so young and um, you're just gaining experience, but in your sort of new experience for you, I would say, what do you think are the qualities a person needs to have to become a caseworker because this is you know for people who are listening to this conversation and who may be thinking of heading in this direction in terms mm-hmm. of a career but don't really know more I think it would be interesting to you know for them to get some kind of an insight from someone who's already a caseworker mm-hmm. who's so young who's just started out and who works for such an amazing like tribe i guess um is you got to have a lot of patience because so usually i would just think that you're actually sowing a seed it take time yeah to grow to bloom and to bear fruits so you got really you really need a lot of patience and i guess another thing is that you got to be very accepting because usually the clients they really need a lot of accept- acceptance and assurance and empathy, you know, I guess empathy. empathy too yes correct yeah, yeah. so and, um, usually acceptance and empathy come together yeah okay. Okay. Um, so, I mean I, I mean I, yeah. I I would not have known that yeah okay thanks for clarifying <laughs> oh no actually I, I wanted to put empathy too I, I mean I'm just thinking should I just put it as a whole as acceptance <laughs> oh, okay. yeah okay. I guess the last one is also don't be too hard on yourself yeah because usually cases can get really challenging mm-hmm. i saw this one quality is you just got to you know practice self-care 
Self-care. Yeah, that, that's important. No, that's a very, very good way of summarizing the, ki- the kind of qualities that you need to have in a person. Because once you step into this world, then, you know, you, you have to make sure that you yourself are protected emotionally mm. and psychologically. Yeah. So, wow, that's, that's amazing, Helga. I mean, it's just been very interesting listening to you. Um, mm. And it's it's the start of your career and I wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and yeah. Um, yeah, and take care and, you know, and be well and also keep looking ahead. Thank you. Yes, I, I guess this is really good advice. Yeah, to keep <laughs> looking ahead. That's, yeah, I think that's very, very important. You have to, because, it, you know, that's what will also, I mean, that's the energy that will also, I guess, filter to your clients, right? When you communicate with them. So being positive is always the way to be going forward. So thank you once again, Helga. I really enjoyed talking to you. <laughs> Enjoy talking to you too. <laughs> so much. You. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you. You too. Bye. For more weekly conversations, do listen to Melting Pot on Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts. Follow us on YouTube and on Instagram at Podcast Melting Pot. So until the next episode, this is Pyle signing off.